Danielle? Yes, Charlie. Danielle, shh. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Quiet. Okay. We stand among the, the Viridian water vines, Danielle. Whoa, that sounds green. We are somewhere along the far edge of Mogra Yi, the Great Salt Desert. Ooh, that sounds not green. We are the last of the humans, a mutant, Danielle. A mutant in a strange world. I have at my disposal strange powers, but nothing, nothing compares to the Gishlings which we hunt. Okay. Well, you have crocosins. That sounds pretty cool. They are moccasins made from crocodiles, Danielle. <laughs> they are crocosins. <laughs> That's great. Is that where crocs come from, I, do you think? I think it is. <laughs> this, I've, I've been having so much fun with this game over the last few days, Danielle. It's called yeah. The Caves of Cud. Q-U-D. Ooh and it's available on Steam. It's the first time that it's actually contained art, this version. Previously, okay. it was just all ASCII. So <laughs> they've actually got oh, wow. tile art and a character icon for your character rather than like a little weird symbol. Yeah, no, this this looks cool. But, I know I don't quite know what's going on yet, uh, but I think I'm going to figure it out if I if I watch long enough. Well, let me explain seems. to you what's going on. I'm, yes. I'm tracking these enemies that are harassing the villagers, the, the water farmers, actually, at this little village called Joppa, J-O-P-P-A. Okay. And I don't know what they're called, but I've been wandering around the, the salt flats outside of this water farming community trying to find these creatures. And I've stumbled upon them almost accidentally. And so that's me in the upper right corner. That's my little okay. character there shooting arrows. And I'm shooting arrows at these little... Uh, I don't even know what they are. They're yeah. these little Jerks. glow pads, yeah. they're called, okay. out in the woods. But then there's these little spiderling things that are coming at me. They're purple, green there. The spiderlings, okay. these are the gishlings. And I have been hunting them literally for hours, Danielle. And I wow. finally stumbled upon them. And it's my job. Ah, there's a crocodile. Hang on. Oh, yeah, I there's see a crocodile. You can make some more crocosins. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing that I am so in love with, with the Caves of Cud about is that it is a completely unique and truly deeply foreign world that they have created. And I just love exploring it. Here I am out in this place chasing these creatures I've never heard of. There's there's nothing I can think of in any other game like a Gishling. And I am a, a mutated human warden that's on their tail. And it's so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds really cool. And actually, I really love games that have very, very minimal style like this because it lets you use your imagination just a little bit more than your average game, I suppose you could say. And I think that's actually really cool. And it seems like that combines sort of some elements from text adventures as well as, you know, they, it seems like this is an RPG structure or a roguelike structure well, or something it, along those it's lines. It's definitely a roguelike. In fact, it's okay. played with the, uh, the keypad almost exclusively. You can run oh, almost the whole game with one through nine. Um, plus and minus are used. Uh, with the left hand, you're going to access your inventory and certain items in the menu list with your left hand on the keyboard. There's actually a special setting if you're playing on a laptop or don't have, or have like a 10 mm. keyless keyboard only at your disposal that, that makes it a little harder to play. Um, <laughs> so you need the big 114 key keyboard to really do it. Okay. But you certainly don't need a mouse and you don't need a controller, that's for sure. But there's this weird little, I, I, it, it, you're able to go so fast and have so much of an experience uh, with the game using just that uh, keypad to maneuver. You're moving right and left and up and down and diagonally. You're attacking with the F key with your ranged weapons. You're using... Um, uh, the numpad to to cast your special mutant powers and it goes really fast you're able to cover a lot of ground unlike something like uh, you know like a dark souls you wouldn't be able to go quite as fast sure. um, but this is actually the overworld map so this this is as much of the game world that i've been able to uh, as i've been able to uncover uh so far and what you're going to notice wow. is that up here in the upper right um that's kind of where we're heading. Um, okay. The lower left, you can see our little character icon is where we are. We're, we're trying to kind of progressing towards the upper right into the caves of Kud. 
Ooh. Right? So, th so this is how the game begins itself. It, it shows you th on the horizon, it says, Kuds, jungles, strangle, chrome steeples, and rusted Ooh. archways to the earth. It's almost like this prose poem that it's weaving. Uh, like like um, like uh, Gilgamesh almost within the, totally, yeah. within the cutscenes, <laughs> but it's this bizarre post-apocalyptic retro-futurist far future version maybe of our Earth? I'm not even sure yet. Sure, sure. I, that's super fascinating. Now, I played a game, Eidolon, last year that, that had that same general kind of story, but certainly a different approach. You know, that was a 3D exploration game. But I, I love that aesthetic. I don't know, there's something about it that's kind of special. Like you're rediscovering things or Earth has taken back, you know, our planet from us. And now you're rediscovering what, what it means to be a human on Earth with other creatures and other things kind of going on. And there's something about that that's really kind of primal and special. And it sounds like this is really tapping into that. Well, and, but, but some of the creatures that they have created for this game are, are really out there. Danielle. Oh, I nice. Wanna, I want to take you on a quick tour, uh, kind of, of, of the beginning part of the game, if I could, real quick. Absolutely. All right. All right. So here's here's the very first screen that you're going to see when you start this game up. You have okay. two options, one of which is a mutated human, and the other is a true kin. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what a true kin is. I don't know what a true kin does. I may likely not find out, frankly, because I'm having a hard enough time playing a mutated human, even though it seems sure. slightly more powerful. But. Sure. We'll no, hit. that makes sense. Uh, also, there's a relationship with the Putus Templar there. But there's that's... all these little relationships baked into the game. And we'll kind of get to, to some of that, what I'm talking about here in a minute. Let me just quickly dump some attribute points in so that we got yeah. something to go with. Uh, I'll do a little intelligence. We're probably not going to use any of this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> we'll be dead before that happens. Space. All right, so here are our mutations, right? Ooh. So you can click your morphotypes. And so these morphotypes, you can be either a chimera, an esper, or you can have an unstable genome right Ooh. off the top of the bat. With an unstable genome, you actually have a 30% chance that your geno genome destabilizes each time you level up and you get to choose from three random mutations. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Right? But it, it completely changes the way you're forced to play the game because look at these oh. mutations, all right? There's oh, wow. something like adrenal control which allows you to regulate your release of adrenaline. But then there's, you can be double muscled, which will double make you- Double muscled? It'll make you wow. stronger, but it'll make you slower. Okay. You can okay. you can have there's... horns, Danielle. Whoa, that sounds pretty cool. Can't wear helmets. Earlier, you get a lot of uh, reputation with antelopes and goat folk that way if you have horns. That's, <laughs> right. That's good. That always helps. Multiple <laughs> legs is one that I had early on. You actually have two pairs of legs. Wow. But you, like, I don't know. Th then there's night vision. Night vision I love. Don't have to hold on to a torch if you have night vision. Um, mm -hmm. Phasing is great. Oh, that one sounds very useful. You, photosynthetic skin. Ooh. There's actually a lot of sentient plant life in this game, so having a better reputation with <laughs> roots, trees, vines, and the consortium of phyta, I'm sure <laughs> helps a lot. Consortium of phyta, that sounds like a cool consortium to hang out with, for sure. You can have quills. <laughs> There's actually an entire race of sentient bears in this game, and those sentient oh, bears amazing. also have very deadly poisonous quills. I don't know if you knew, but they do. Okay, okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Down here, actually, we've got... Uh, mental mutations as well. Ooh, you, be big you cause mm. plants to spontaneously grow in your area. You can have clairvoyance. Ooh. All of this is stuff you can just start the game with, right? So what this leads to is really unique ways of kind of almost gaming the system early on in the game. Sure. So you can, uh, you can use something like ego projection, right? And if you dump enough stats in it, right at the beginning of the game, you can um, do these crazy, uncanny physical feats, break down doors that you wouldn't be able to normally go into. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah, mass. That's really cool. They give you control over sort of how you can break their game. <laughs> exactly. That's, That's awesome. But that puts the burden on them to uh, create a game that is able to handle those yeah. types of, uh, you know, 
other games might call them bugs, but you know, I just have the ability to burrow into the ground. That's one of the mutations. You have scoops for hands. Would you like to dig a hole? <laughs> dig a hole anywhere in my world. I, as a game designer, have to accommodate that, though. Yeah. God, that's amazing. That's... <laughs> <laughs> and there were, you know, 20 of those, not just, you know. I want to say there's 70. Oh, my God. Different mutations okay. that you can start with. I'll, I'll have to check. Wow. I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. But there's just sure, a sure. bunch of them. Let me introduce you to my friend, the man camel. We're here in Jopa, where you begin your journey. Okay. And this is the merchant of Jopa. Look at this guy. Look at this dude. A stoic, long-necked man camel merchant. Look at his little oh. icon. He sounds stoic. If you, if look, he does. He looks kind of adorable. He's got a actually. little shawl on and his yeah. hump under the shawl. But then, I mean, just all of the different characters that they present to you, even in this beginning, this beginning uh, area, is just incredible. This is this is uh, from best I can tell the town guard. Let's look at his description. This is Warden Olrig. He shifts okay. his weight between his hind and his forelegs. You know, he's got two sets of legs, no big. Sure. Shakes sure. the dander off the chipped surface of his great curling horns that splay from his temple. In one hand, Danielle, he has a purring blade. The other, huh? he's damaged, perhaps with his own frost powers. Oh. Reminds that's us. That's an interesting idea. You know, it'll damage you if you have these powers. Right. Yes. yes. Uh, but then he, he, like a lot of the other characters in the game, has these um, affinities or a, a kind of history with the different factions in the world, right? He's loved by the Fellowship of Wardens. In this particular game that I'm playing, he's admired by highly entropic beings for oh, explaining goodness. the meaning of the Canticles Chromaic. Whoa. In another game, he might have some other affinity that might influence actions or reactions that I might have to him or other NPCs might have to him. Oh my god, this is fascinating. There is so much depth here that I'm even just first five seconds in this game and there's already <laughs> kind of so much going on. This guy might be my, my favorite here, right? He is the village elder. His Ooh. smile is warm, but protruding from his back is a stalk hidden under a veil. The stalk forks into two hands with eyes in their palms. Whoa. And immediately you know why men follow Iradad. Like, what? Iridad, I, Elder Iridad is his name. Early in the game, what you do is you come into this room here and you close the door and you steal whoever this is. You take all of their stuff. Ooh. Uh, so I got a silver nugget. That's going to be good trade goods. We'll grab all of torch. that. Take yeah. all of that. Don't need the torch because I can see in the dark, Danielle. Don't oh, worry about that. Oh, that's right. You, you got that mutation. And then you hop on over here. We're going to talk to our man camel friend, Tab. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Tab brings up your inventory L lets you look. You gotta move the cursor around. How do I talk to him? I like Space how all of them say, it's you. It's you. They all say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tap to trades, so, right? I'm gonna trade him this silver nugget, which is good for $50. That's a lot. And I'm actually gonna grab, what do we got here? I'm gonna grab this steel longsword, right? That should get me through. And we're going to offer him that. I'll have to actually trade him the balance in fresh water, because I, I don't know if I mentioned we're in salt flats here. Very so I waterless. have to ask here, it looks like bear jerky. You've got some of that. Oh. Is it going to is it gonna make the sentient beers mad? Let's not. If you, if you kind of go by and you're like, hey, I've got some of your friends in my in my jerky here. <laughs> we do what we have to do here. Yeah. In the I salt guess you're flats, right. I okay? guess you're right. You know, it, yeah. We eke by our existence. Uh, so let's grab a quest real quick. Our first quest comes from this gentleman here. Uh, boop, boop. Uh, what can you tell me about Jopa? I'm in search of work. Here's those critters that are eating our water vine, right? Oh. Farouk claims he saw one slinking around a vine patch. Let's accept the quest. So we're going to zoom out to the world oh. map, and then this is how we move across the overworld. You can become lost in the overworld, too, which forces you down a level into this mm. randomly generated area, and you begin to kind of fight your way out to get your bearings. Oh, so here we are. This this is kind of what a new area looks like. It's nighttime. You've got that fog of war out there. You sure. can't really see what's going on. I found um, angry baboons in this opening oh, area that pummel me to death with stones. I found oh, no. a traveling caravan of a set. Well, here's those baboons again. Don't want to mess oh, with no. them. Ah! Oh, no. Run away from the baboons. Yeah, I actually haven't equipped any of my weapons. Let's see what we can do about that. So here's how you do the menu system. Tab brings up the menu, and then keypad 7 and 9 lets you go through it all. It's really okay. crazy. 
Sharp iron longsword. Remove. Let's see what else we've got. There we go. Steel longsword. Two base damage plus 1d8. Good to go. That will okay. help me out a Let's little bit. Let's show those baboons what for. Well, actually, there's too many of them. I don't want to. Ah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh my another. goodness. Oh, my God. So many sentient baboons. <laughs> Get. Leave me be. Too many baboons. Oh, my crying out loud. That is like a boss baboon. Let's take a look at him. A hulking baboon. From atop it's, it's sunning boulder. It's hulking. It's... Oh, I, I landed a critical hit. Good. Oh, man, I got to get out of here. There we go. Two baboons down. All right, we're good to go. Run away, run away. <laughs> away from those baboons. All right, I'm going to hit Tilled here, and that's going to let me rest until healed. And then I'm going to go back to that map and try and fight my way towards the rust caves. Oh, there's that baboon chasing me down. Oh, my God. Oh, he dropped something, though. See the little bit That's of loot that he least. dropped? I don't know what he yeah. dropped, but we're going to grab some of it. Oh, this one's a shrewd baboon. What does he have? Oh. A vicious bite. Two Ooh. puffs of gray fur billow out from either side of its face. Let's fix that problem for him. Yeah. Here's your billowing fur. Can't do that without a face. <laughs> All right. I think we're in the clear. Tilled to rest again. Then we're back up to full health. But as I rest, right, I have to drink water. I have to eat food. Mm. I have to kind of survive out here in the middle of nowhere. It looks like I chased off the rest of the baboons. There's a okay, bit of good. intelligence to the enemies as well. They will hide. They will run. They will attack. They seem to have a bit of foresight to them in a way. Yeah. I just, some, some rudimentary AI. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually fairly compelling to, to watch them react to you. Uh, I still have enemies in the area. I just want to find this little staircase down. There are so many baboons here. Oh, my God. This is like baboon breeding ground. There we go. I'm tearing right. through baboons right now. Yeah. See, he just ran away because I, I killed all of his, his betters there. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Another hulking baboon. This could end poorly. Yep. We got a problem. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Baboon corpse. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, oh. I just want, I just want to relax, baboons. Cut me some slack. I'm, I'm near death. Now I'm. Re so many. <laughs> what? I just want to find the entrance to this tomb to show my friend Danielle around. Oh. Honestly, this is the most luck. Ooh, I gained a level. Oh, nice. So as you level up, you get a mutation point. You gather up four mutation points. You can select your own next mutation. There we go. All right, I get a good feeling about going over here. Excellent. Yeah, this looks a there little it more is. clear. All right, Yay! So, so this is, you hit plus sign to go down into a dungeon, and now this dungeon is infested with snap jaw scavengers. So these are kind of oh your kobolds God. of this sure. particular game. Um, so yeah, there's there's multiple levels of these dungeons. I get a really great vibe, like some of those, you know, some of those first uh, adventure style roguelike RPG games yeah. that I ever played on something like the Atari or something like uh, the Intellivision, but much meatier, much more responsive, yeah. much more, much deeper. And then with a, with a world that really responds to your actions and, and has factions and political controversies and this weird kind of prose poetic story to back it all up. So I don't know. I've, I've That's really cool. I mean, would you say this is this is as if these kinds of games never stopped being made, and this is the 2015 sort of best version of that kind of game. Well, I, I don't know if it's the best version of the game. I, I haven't sure, played sure. a ton of these. This is kind of a, a very significant niche of kind of the retro gaming is this kind of uh, uh, roguelike game built in ASCII. Like, that's a genre. That's a thing, oh, wow. right? Yeah. That I haven't spent enough time in, so I don't know if it's the best. But I got to tell you, narratively, this yeah. is one of the one of the more compelling <laughs> game stories that I've seen in a long time. It just it it pulls me forward and it makes me want to uncover the mysteries of it. And it plays just so darn quick. I mean, I've gotten so much done in just the few minutes that we've been playing. I killed a band of baboons. I dove into a, a, the rusty cliff face with an assault jungle, and now <laughs> I'm searching for you know these these foul scavenger beasts that are affecting the farmers the next village over. It, there's so much to it. 
So, yeah, you would still be, you know, in the first screen of a tutorial in a Zelda game at this point. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it, it trusts the player, it gives them a lot of tools, and for 10 bucks on Steam, the game isn't finished yet, it's still in development, I believe it's it's technically early access, but um, yeah, highly recommend it. Lots of fun. Awesome. This looks really cool, thank you. All right, well, I'll, uh, I'm will i going to jump back into the game with a brand new character. I think I'm going to go maybe see if I can be a man camel myself, if that's an option. Oh. Maybe I that can, or, or maybe select some mutations to bring me closer to being a man camel. I don't know, Ooh. but it appeals to me, Danielle. I'm going to go see what that feels like. That sounds great. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the time. <laughs>